Hi, welcome to the MVAC lab. The phrase stone tools might first call to mind chipped stone projectile points, but native people throughout North and South America also used ground or pecked stone implements for crushing, grinding, and hammering different materials. So today, let's turn our attention to grinding tools called manos and matades. Manos and matades, like these from the La Crosse area, were used to grind plant foods such as corn, nuts, and seeds into meal or flour. The use of grinding and milling stones to crush nuts in this region goes back at least 7,000 years to a time archaeologists call the Archaic Period. However, manos and matades are associated with corn processing in the more recent past, when native people intensively grew and ground corn and farmed other crops. While small-scale cultivation can be traced to around AD 1000, it was during the Oneota period, beginning about AD 1300, that more extensive corn agriculture arose, long before Europeans arrived in the area. A matate is a large, stationary stone that serves as a platform for the material being ground. A mano is a handheld tool moved in a circular or back and forth motion to grind the material on the matade. Manos and matades are a practical, small-scale alternative to the industrial grinding stones that grind our grain today. They can be made of a variety of types of rock. In the La Crosse area, matades, because of their large size, were usually made of locally available bedrock sandstone or limestone. The smaller manos were sometimes made of those rock types, but other rocks were used as well, such as granite, basalt, or quartzite found in glacial gravels. How do we recognize manos and matades archaeologically? Manos exhibit smoothing on the surface or surfaces used for grinding. They can also show pitting and signs of battering if used for hammering, pecking, or crushing. Some monos have a depression on one side, possibly from use as a nutting stone, with the depression holding the nut in place while it was cracked open. The grinding surfaces of matades wear down and become smooth over time, leaving them flat or slightly concave. These wear patterns help archaeologists identify these tools, even when only fragments survive. Manos and matades form just one part of the broader picture of plant use. Other types of tools offer further insights. For example, bison scapula or shoulder blade hose, such as this one, which would have been hafted to a handle like the replica above it, provide evidence of plant cultivation. A few steps before a crop like corn would meet a grinding stone. And archaeological charred plant remains, such as the corn kernels and cob, seen here, reveal which plants grew near or were brought to the site and were likely used or consumed. Whether basalt or sandstone, circular or oblong, manos and matades provide a durable record of a key method of food preparation.